What would you choose over the other? A life of absolute control or the unpredictable path of freedom? This is a question that has sparked countless debates over the years. The concept of dictatorship and freedom is not as black and white as it appears. It's a complex puzzle with numerous dimensions, each adding a layer of depth and intrigue. On one hand, there's absolute control, where every aspect of life is dictated by a single entity. On the other, there's the freedom to make your own choices, to experience the thrill of unpredictability. Now, imagine a nation rich in history and globally influential in the economic sphere. Yet, beneath this facade lies a paradox, the struggle between control and freedom. This paradox is not just an idea, but a reality for millions living in this nation. Today, we delve into a journey tracing the rise of dictatorship in a nation known for its rich history and global economic influence. Our journey begins in the 1940s, a time of turmoil and transformation. The world watched as China, a nation with an ancient history and a rapidly changing present, was caught in the throes of a civil war. This war was not just a battle of armies, but a clash of ideologies, a struggle for the soul of a nation. The Chinese Civil War, which raged from 1945 to 1949, was a fierce contest between the Nationalist Party, known as the Kuomintang, and the Communist Party of China. It was a war that would determine the political and ideological future of China. The result? A victory for the Communist Party, led by Mao Zedong, who declared the establishment of the People's Republic of China on October 1, 1949. This marked a significant shift in political ideology from a nation that had been ruled by emperors for thousands of years and then by a nationalist government, China was now under the control of a communist regime. This new ideology promised equality and prosperity for all, but it also meant a consolidation of power. The Communist Party became the sole governing body of the country, controlling every aspect of life, from the economy to education, from culture to the personal lives of its citizens. Under the leadership of Mao Zedong, the Communist Party sought to unify China under a single political and ideological banner. Land was redistributed from landlords to peasants, industry and commerce were nationalized, and a sweeping campaign was launched to eliminate opposition and consolidate the party's rule. The goal was not just a new political system, but a new social order, a new way of thinking, a new China. This was a time of great change, of hope and fear, of promise and uncertainty. It was a time when the old was swept away and the new was yet to be fully understood or defined. It was a time of revolution, of the birth of a new political order and the death of an old way of life. Thus, a new China emerged draped in the banner of communism. With the reins of control in their grasp, the Communist Party embarked on a path of rapid industrialization and collectivization. This marked the beginning of an ambitious socio-political campaign known as the Great Leap Forward, which spanned from 1958 to 1962. The campaign's purpose, as defined by the party, was to transform China from an agrarian economy into a modern industrial society with a communist ethos. At the heart of the Great Leap Forward were two main policies, collectivization and industrialization. Collectivization aimed to consolidate individual land and labor into collective farms. This, they believed, would increase agricultural output. On the other hand, the industrialization policy set out to increase steel production, with a focus on backyard furnaces where scrap metal was melted down. However, the reality of these policies was a stark contrast to the optimistic vision. The collectivization policy, instead of increasing agricultural output, led to a severe drop in food production. Farmers, unfamiliar with the new farming techniques, struggled, and the overreporting of production figures masked the impending disaster. Simultaneously, the feverish push for steel production led to a massive misallocation of resources. 
everyday items like pots and pans were melted down in backyard furnaces, producing substandard pig iron that was of little use to the economy. The culmination of these ill-conceived policies was an economic catastrophe. The Great Leap Forward resulted in the most deadly famine in human history, with an estimated 30 to 45 million people losing their lives in just four years. The Chinese people bore the brunt of the disaster, facing unimaginable hardships. The Great Leap Forward, a campaign driven by political ambition and ideological fervor, turned out to be a devastating misstep. It serves as a stark reminder of the potential dangers of unchecked power and the dire consequences of policies divorced from ground realities. The Great Leap Forward, a leap that led to economic hardship and widespread famine. The echoes of this historical event still reverberate in the corridors of contemporary Chinese politics and society. As the nation recovered from the economic crisis, a new wave of ideological revolution swept across China. This wave, known as the Cultural Revolution, spanned from 1966 to 1976. It was a time of intense societal upheaval, sparked by the then leader Mao Zedong. Mao aimed to reassert his authority over the Chinese government, believing that the current communist leaders were moving the country towards capitalism. This revolution was not just about politics. It was a complete upheaval of culture, education, and societal norms. Traditional customs, old habits, and old ideas were to be discarded in favor of a new revolutionary culture. The goal? To create a classless society where the proletariat, the working class, would reign supreme. But the Cultural Revolution was not a peaceful transition. It was marked by widespread purges, as Mao sought to remove those he believed were infiltrating the party with capitalist ideals. These purges were ruthless and indiscriminate, affecting not just high-ranking officials, but ordinary citizens too. Many intellectuals, educators and artists were publicly humiliated, their reputations tarnished, their lives upended. Some were even executed or driven to suicide. At the heart of this revolution were the Red Guards, groups of young people, often students, who pledged their loyalty to Mao. They were the enforcers of this revolution, the ones who carried out the purges and public humiliations. They were the embodiment of Mao's desire for continuous revolution. The power dynamics within the Communist Party also underwent significant changes during this time. Mao used the revolution to consolidate his power, removing potential rivals and re-establishing his ideology as the guiding principle of the party. The Cultural Revolution, however, had far-reaching consequences. It disrupted the economy, led to widespread social conflict, and resulted in the loss of numerous lives. It left a deep scar on the Chinese society, a scar that is still felt today. The Cultural Revolution, a decade-long period of chaos and turmoil, further entrenched the power of the Communist Party. This was a time of great change, a time of upheaval, a time that has shaped the China we see today. Fast forward to the present day, the Communist Party still holds the reins of power, but has the nature of dictatorship evolved? As we delve into the contemporary political structure of China, we find a system that is both intriguing and complex. On the surface, it appears to be a one-party state, with the Communist Party exerting control over all aspects of governance. However, beneath this veneer, a myriad of factions and interest groups vie for power and influence, shaping the nation's policies and direction. A key facet of this modern-day control is the stringent regulation of information. The Chinese government has mastered the art of controlling the narrative by censoring unfavorable news, promoting state-approved content, and creating an alternate reality within the confines of the Great Firewall. This information control extends beyond the digital sphere, with state-run media channels consistently presenting a harmonized view of the world. But what happens when the harmony is disrupted? Dissent, the lifeblood of a democratic society, is often stifled, suppressed, and silenced in China. Whistleblowers, activists, and anyone daring to challenge the status quo 
face a daunting array of consequences from online harassment to detention and imprisonment. This suppression of dissent is not a relic of the past, but a chilling reality of the present. So, what does this all mean? Can we label China as a modern dictatorship? The answer is not as straightforward as it might seem. On one hand, China exhibits many of the traditional traits of a dictatorship. A one-party rule, control of information, and suppression of dissent. But on the other hand, it has embraced many aspects of modernity, becoming a global economic power and innovator in technology. Modern China, a global powerhouse, yet the question remains. At what cost comes this power? Is the price of progress the sacrifice of individual freedoms and human rights? As we continue to scrutinize the complex political landscape of China, let's not forget the vital question at the heart of this discussion. Is freedom a negotiable commodity in the quest for power and prosperity? From the emergence of the Communist Party to the present day, the journey of China is as complex as it is compelling. We've traveled through history, witnessing the rise of the Communist Party, a movement that forever altered the cultural and political landscape of the nation. We've delved into the Great Leap Forward, an ambitious plan that aimed at rapid industrialization and collectivization, but led to one of the deadliest famines in history. We've explored the Cultural Revolution, a decade of upheaval and chaos that left an indelible mark on China's psyche, and we've scrutinized the modern China, which, despite its economic might and technological prowess, continues to grapple with accusations of authoritarianism and suppression of its citizens. This journey through time has not been a mere history lesson, but a study of power, control, and the human spirit's desire for freedom. As we reflect on the nature of power and freedom, one must ask, what is the true price of dictatorship?